We've seen the distinction between specific and general catalysis in an acid context, and the same distinction exists within the Bronsted base catalysis paradigm. To study base catalysis, I want to look at this reaction, which is the elimination of hydrogen cyanide, or HCN, from a starting material called a cyanohydrin with a hydroxyl group on an sp3 carbon that's also linked to a cyano group in the presence of catalytic base. The catalytic base facilitates the elimination of HCN and this forms a carbonyl group, CO double bond, and HCN. We can draw an uncatalyzed mechanism for this process that involves charge separation through beta elimination in the first elementary step to generate a pair of molecules with opposite charges followed by proton transfer which generates the neutral products, proton transfer from the cationic intermediate to the anionic cyanide. And clearly, because the first step involves charge separation, the formation of charged products from neutral starting materials, this is going to be a high activation energy process. However, in the presence of a small amount of a strong base, a specific base catalyzed mechanism takes place. Recall that the purpose in life of a base is to deprotonate the nucleophile or electron source to make it stronger. And that's exactly what happens in this specific base catalyzed elimination. In the first step, hydroxide deprotonates the atom that's going to serve as the nucleophile or electron source in the beta elimination, and that's the oxygen. The deprotonation generates an anionic intermediate, and now beta elimination is much easier since we have a much stronger electron source in the anionic oxygen, and we've avoided charge separation. Now we're just dealing with charge transfer from an anionic oxygen to what will become an anionic carbon. This, is, this beta elimination is the business step of this reaction mechanism, if you will. This forms the carbonyl compound and also generates Cn minus, and to turn over the cycle, regenerate the base catalyst and generate HCN, we have to do another proton transfer. We generated the conjugate acid of the specific base catalyst in the first step, and that engages with Cn minus in a proton transfer step to form HCN and generate OH minus again, which can return to the start of the cycle and engage with another molecule of substrate. So as we saw in the specific acid catalyzed mechanism, here hydroxide is acting as a specific base catalyst because a full or complete proton transfer step occurs. Through that first proton transfer, we generate an anionic intermediate here. This undergoes the business step, here it's a beta elimination, and then a second proton transfer occurs to regenerate the catalyst. Classic specific base catalyzed mechanism here. This reaction can also be catalyzed by weak bases, such as amines. And when a weak base is used, general base catalysis is observed. For example, we observe a dependence of the reaction rate on the identity, the strength, and the concentration of the base used. That's a hallmark of general base catalysis. An alkylamine like triethylamine isn't a strong enough base to deprotonate an alcohol favorably. However, what it can do is engage with the alcohol proton as the beta elimination step is taking place. And this is what happens in the general base catalyzed mechanism. Notice that the base is still acting to enhance the nucleophilicity of the electron donor atom, here the oxygen. It's doing that though at the same time as the elementary step is taking place. This avoids the formation of an oxy anion, an O minus intermediate, because we go right to the carbonyl product, the conjugate acid of the base used, and Cn minus. To turn over the cycle, Cn minus and the base get together in a proton transfer step to form NET3, which can engage with another molecule of substrate, restarting the catalytic cycle, and HCN, the other observed product. And so if we were to label these steps, we might call the first step PT plus E beta, since a proton transfer is occurring at the electron source or nucleophilic atom within the E beta step, and the electrons that are freed up as a result of this proton transfer step, the electrons in the OH bond, are going into an E beta step. Now, the perceptive may notice that this is simply an E2 elementary step. In a non-catalysis context, we would just call this E2, and it's totally fine to label that as such. But I like PT plus E beta to show that from a catalysis perspective, this is a composite step involving a proton transfer to the catalyst, to the basic catalyst, and a business step, beta elimination. After this occurs, we need a second proton transfer to turn over the catalytic cycle and generate the other neutral product. And this is typical of general catalyzed mechanisms involving just an acid or a base as well.
As we saw in the general acid case, the hallmark of general base catalysis is partial proton transfer in the business step. We avoid an O minus intermediate, but there is partial transfer of this proton to the base in the rate determining transition state. Let's review what we've seen by comparing general and specific catalysis. Specific catalyzed reactions involve a specific acid. Now that sounds fairly obvious, but the key thing to realize is that in aqueous solutions or reactions where we use an acid or base in water, the specific acid is always H3O plus and the specific base is always OH minus. This means that the source of H3O plus or OH minus that we use in the acid case, something like HCl, HI, HBr, does not matter. The actual catalytic species is H3O+. And similarly, in a base context, the specific source of hydroxide we use is irrelevant. So we could use sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, etc. It doesn't matter what source of hydroxide we use. Hydroxide is the active catalyst. And specific catalyzed reactions are typical of laboratory reactions where we use strong reagents. You'll notice that those pre-catalysts that I listed are all either strong acids or strong bases. In a laboratory context where we can use heat, there's plenty of energy available, and the reaction is relatively pure. The substrates and the catalyst are the only things in the reaction mixture. It's totally okay to use these strong reagents and rely on high energy intermediates in specific catalyzed reactions. And speaking of high energy intermediates, the mechanistic hallmark of specific catalyzed reactions is that proton transfer occurs in a discrete elementary step. The first step, generally, of specific catalyzed mechanisms involves proton transfer to or from the catalyst. When weak acids or bases are involved, the typical paradigm is general catalysis. And the idea of general catalysis is that all of the weak acids or bases present in the reaction mixture contribute to the observed reaction rate and changing the identity or concentration of the acid or the base will change the kinetics of the reaction. So there's no longer a specific species acting as the catalyst. The catalyst could involve any of the acids present in the reaction mixture or any of the bases. And mechanistically, the hallmark is proton transfer occurring together or at the same time as the business elementary step and what we might call a composite elementary step, PT plus something in the case of a base catalyst or something plus PT in the case of an acid catalyst. General catalysis is typical when weak reagents are used. So these might be things like acetic acid, carboxylic acids, amine bases, neutral bases are often used in general catalyzed mechanisms. And importantly, general catalysis is the norm in biochemical contexts. In biochemical systems, reaction mixtures are not clean. Reactions are occurring in the presence of all kinds of other molecules. And the avoidance of high energy intermediates is very important to maintain the stability and fidelity of the biochemical system. For this reason, biochemical systems make use of general catalysis, and we'll see that in great detail when we talk about enzyme catalysis later in the course. These general acids and general bases are often found in the active sites of enzymes where they catalyze biochemical transformations. So this specific versus general distinction may seem a little bit subtle, but there are still universal principles we want to keep in mind. And the most important mechanistic principle is that acids activate electrophiles, acids protonate electrophiles to make them stronger, while bases activate nucleophiles. Bases deprotonate nucleophiles to make them stronger. You want to keep this in mind so that you can start withdrawing catalytic mechanisms by engaging acid catalysts with the electrophile of a reaction and base catalysts with the nucleophile in the first step.